أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل طيبين الطاهين المعصومين المظلومين الذين أذهب الله ومن هم رجس أهل البيت ويطهرهم تطهيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام صلوات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in Allah's eyes, the best religion for us is Islam. However much we thank him, it is not enough. He made us born into a Muslim family with loving parents. He gave us food, clothes, shelter. He gave us all the necessities of life and the best of things that he has gave us is the love of the Ahlul Bayt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us so much, the least we can do is listen to him and obey him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us so much that when we are sick, he is there to care for us. When we are sad, he said, I am there to make you happy. When you need something, I am there to give it to you. When you want something, someone to talk to, I am there to listen to you. Allah says, I love you more than your own mother. Not once, not twice, not 10 times, but he says, I love you more than your mother 70 times. How much does our mother love us? When we are sick, she will stay up all night. When we are hungry, she will make sure we eat first. When we have exams, she will be more worried than us. She always puts us before herself. She has always sacrificed for us. Our mothers loves us so much, but Allah says that I love you more than your mother 70 times. And the same way our mothers protect us and cares for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also looking out for us. So many times, Allah gives us favors. We should thank him for all these favors, but the worst of things that we do is complain. Allah says, if you thank me, I will increase for you. I will give you so much more, but if you complain and if you're ungrateful, then you will be in trouble. For example, if our slippers or something happens to our shoes, if they break on the way on the, way on the road, instead of complaining why it's happened to me, we should be thankful to Allah that at least he's given us feet so we can carry on walking home without help and we can buy new ones later. What does it mean to be thankful? How should we give thanks? Thanking Allah, thanking Allah means to use his blessings properly. For example, if your father gives you an iPad as a gift, you won't use it to cut vegetables on it. If you do that, of course, your father will take it back and he will think that you're not being grateful for his gift. Or if you get a new iPhone, you won't throw it down the first floor stairs. That's being ungratefulness. In the same way, Allah has given us so many bounties. We need to use them the right way and not be wasteful. Allah does not like asraf, which is wastefulness. So many times we become wasteful. Sometimes we leave the lights and the fans on, or we leave the tap running, or we put even so much food on our plate that we don't finish it. Do you know that even if we leave one grain of rice on our plate every day, only one, then in the whole year we have thrown away more than a plate. Did you know that every four seconds someone is dying because of hunger? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will say, you killed so many people. Allah will say there were people dying hungry and you were throwing away food. So, so such a wonderful religion we have, which cares for everyone. If we are thankful, Allah will increase for us. There was a man at the time of Nabi Musa salam. He told Nabi Musa, O oh Musa, if you go to Allah, please tell him not to increase for me. I have enough. Nabi Musa gave Allah his message. Allah said, tell the man to eat and walk. Now we all know it is not nice to eat whilst walking, but it was Allah's message for that man, so the man started walking. One day, when he was riding his horse and eating, his food fell down. 
He got off his horse straight away and started searching for it. He had so much food, he could have left it, but he started searching. Now it was getting dark, and at those times there weren't any torches or phones. So the man decided to make a small wall around the place where he thought the food had fell, so that an animal can come and eat it. But the main reason was that he did not want someone to disrespect it or step on the food. The man got richer and richer. He went to Nabi Musa. O oh Prophet, I asked, I asked you to tell Allah not to make me richer, but now I am so much more richer. Nabi Musa was confused. He asked Allah, O oh Allah, didn't you, why, didn't you make, why did you make him richer? What happened? Allah said, I am ashamed. I am ashamed to make, not make him rich. How can I make him poor when he respects my blessing so much? I am shy to decrease for him. Salawat. So Islam teaches us to be caring and considerate to others and not be selfish and cruel. The Yazidis were the ones who were selfish and cruel. They were the ones who kept small children hungry and thirsty in the hot deserts. The throats were dry and the lips were burnt. For a minute, let us put our heads down and think of little Sakina. She was a little girl who traveled with her family. The Yazid army stopped water going to them. She was hungry and thirsty for three days. On the 9th of Muharram, she went to her aunt Zainab. Uh, she went to her aunt Zainab to check if she had uh, uh, any little bit of water to spare. But when she went there, she saw that her baby brother was even more thirsty than her. She saw that the baby brother would die if, she, if he didn't get any water. On the day of Ashura, uh, when her uncle, called, when her uncle Abbas called her. Uh, he put her on his laps. He asked her, Oh Sakina, are you thirsty? Go bring your water back. I shall go fill it with water. Sakina told her uncle, Oh Uncle Abbas, yes I am thirsty, but there are so many other children who are more thirsty than I. But oh uncle, if you bring me water, I shall give it to my brother, my baby brother, because he is more thirsty than me and if he doesn't get any water he will die. Uncle Abbas told Sakina, Oh my dear one, don't cry, don't cry until I return to the tents. The children sat down with the empty cups. The children sat down with the empty cups and water and Bibi Sakina stood at the entrance of the tent, waiting. Hazrat Abbas took the water bag and left. He thought to himself, whatever happens to me, I must make sure that the water reaches the tents. Hazrat Abbas reached the river Furat. He filled water, he filled the water bag with the water, but he didn't drink any. He left, he left to reach the tents. When he was on his way back, a man from the army of Yazid cut his arm from the back. Hazrat Abbas quickly caught the water bag with his other arm. Then a man cut his other arm off. Hazrat Abbas quickly caught the water with his teeth. Imagine, imagine both his arms were cut off, both his sides were bleeding, but he didn't stop, he didn't drop the water bag. Then suddenly two arrows came, one went into the eye, one went into his eye, and one went into the mushk. Let me ask you a question. When something goes in your eye, what do we do? How quickly do we rub our hands? Salams on you, oh boy. You didn't have hands to save your eye. You didn't have hands to catch the falling water. In the middle of the enemies, he didn't know what to do. He, 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 he didn't know what to do. He, could go, he couldn't go into the tents without the water. The army attacked him from both sides. The brave warrior fell to the ground. Salams on your bus. You didn't have hands when you fell to the ground. He sent salams to my master. Oh, Imam Hussein. Oh, oh my master Hussein. Imam Hussein went to Hazrat Abbas. Hazrat Abbas told him, Oh, my master, oh, the first thing I saw was your face. And the last thing I would like to see is your face. But there is blood in my eye. 
Imam Hussein removed the blood. Hazrat Abbas saw Imam Hussein for the last time. He told Imam Hussein, Oh Master, don't take my body to the tents. I am ashamed I could not bring water. Hazrat Abbas passed away. Imam Hussein took the flags of the tent, uh, flags to the tents. He called out, Oh my sister Zainab, oh Abbas is no longer, Abbas is no more. The lady Zainab came out the tents. She took the flag, she f took the flag and brought it inside the tents. They started looking for little Sakina. When they found her, they told her that a bus is no more, Sakina. Your uncle's flag has come, but your uncle has no long not come. The little children were sitting with their dry, empty bowels. Bibi Sakina was said, Bibi Sakina was saying, we don't want water anymore. We just want my uncle, uh, my uncle Abbas back. Oh, Chacha Abbas, please come back. Please come back. Please come back. Ala la natullahi al qawmid dalimin wa sayyalamun ladina zalamayan kalbin kalibun. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Salawat.